Yeah, yeah I can see that. If he can't just say Let's, anarchy. You know, <laughs> if he gets out of Falkhaven, I'm, I'll go to anywhere, pretty much. I, I will say Leon will be far more willing to go to Santa Cora right now. Let's go to Santa Cora. It's not where I wanted to go, but... I don't really have anything waiting for me. You, 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 you fucking, like, players need to stop making goddamn impulsive decisions. I tell you what, you know, <laughs> we're, we're going to give you some time to this. We won't have the next session for two weeks, <laughs> so the 26th of May, so that you all can take your time to God. really think about what you want to do. Huh. That way I you don't just go, like, know. fucking, like, careening into, like, a goddamn, like, Let's go to Dragon Hall! Woo! <laughs> Oh, like such a crazy hall? shit like Not that. Dragon Hall. Can we, can we go to Shadowport? No. Shadow uh, I don't know what Shadowport for. Like, <laughs> Crusader's key. Like, like, like you can, you can, like normally, like a majority vote that might be all fine and well, but this needs to be something either every player, players, not your characters, you as players are on the same page, or there's got to be some compromise, or you might have to fucking like leave the goddamn group, or resolve this shit in downtime that's held before you travel out as a group. We, we should just buy all the cheap alcohol from Bjorni's closing sale, drink it all, and see where we wake up. Alternatively, <laughs> we could, we could, we could take it all and go sell it somewhere. You know, so what you're telling we us have an open traders. invitation to Santa Cora. We have... Man, two weeks is so long. Damn it. Yes. We have an open invitation there. We could go to Newport, where we have the dragon. We killed, which might be like, hey, we killed the dragon. We're like, oh, you did? And we show them, like, well, I killed we three yesterday. And... They, they breed like rats. Well, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we leave and go to Santa Cora. Hey, Grimith, how uh. long is a boat trip from Newport to Santa Cora? From Newport to Santa Cora? Well, if you take a look at the world map, it'll actually have it uh, listed. It's a whopping four days between Santa Cora and Newport, roughly. From Foghaven, basically cut that in half. So it wouldn't take very long at all to travel from uh, Newport to Santa Cora by boat. You know oh, that, wow. it, it, that 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 okay. wouldn't that wouldn't have been a problem at all normally. Remember, you folks decided to travel through the caravan in the wild wood because all the goddamn boats were taken because of the fucking rumor that the goddamn emperor was going to be fighting in the arena. And he didn't. No, nope, so people let did. down. We just deploy by the uh, motor. By the shipping really company. Yeah, yep. <laughs> blue did it. Yeah, I if you find out it was a whole elaborate ploy of which you know Tempest. The reason he's over there is maybe he set a rumor that the, the emperor was going to a gig, and that's why he's hiding out in Foghaven. <laughs> anyway, the two weeks are necessary. If you folks are going to genuinely be leaving uh, Foghaven, then I need to. Uh, plan out uh, what yeah. plot threads uh, will exist as a result of you folks and the reputation that you built up and uh, if anyone else uh, offers you an invitation or to uh, possibly go somewhere. So, but, but just to double check here, Ajax is going to do the thing about like making the crops fail right now because I don't think Asilia stepping down is enough, right? Probably not, but what else can we do? Time for you to play devil's advocate. That's assuming she fucking steps down. Yeah. But if you guys are leaving tomorrow, you're not gonna know shit about what she does. No. I mean, we're leaving we good faith. We could wait, like. I mean, either either way, it's not going to fix anything because the town is still going to starve. So effectively, we achieved nothing because that was what Ajax yeah. wanted the entire time. Sure. Yeah, but but she's gonna fix it because she's always been fixing it. So, so why did we people, come here? Didn't you, didn't you say, we to say no. didn't you say all the way back in session one, Manakai, that Ajax was going to completely wreck this town and wasn't one of the yeah. driving factors oh. for you players the hope of Ajax not fucking wrecking this town? And so you're leaving with the idea in mind that Ajax is going to fucking wreck this town. I just want to understand you as players. That's what I I'm trying to achieve. I don't even understand anything anymore. <laughs> There's only one solution to this, and it's killing Orsilia. Uh, no, no, no that would just, it just seems like we can kill. Both. We can kill. We have two people left. We can kill. Killing either of them will escalate things to a worse state. This sort of cold war scenario. That's that's as me as a player. That seems like the best we can hope for. It's not a cold war because Fogaven is going to lose. 
I mean, if you kill Ocelia, mm. she will die and people will be mad at us, but nothing else other than that will happen. We might be wanted, probably, but nothing more. No, you guys will be wanted. They'd be wanted, but nothing wanted. more? I'm like, I'm okay with being an Imperial criminal. Yeah. <laughs> Forget doesn't care about laws. He has his own morals. Yes, 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 Imperial laws don't matter. You see, that's, that's the yes, kind no, of attitude that you... I care about Imperial law. <laughs> <laughs> Good and evil and she not is killing a lich. people just because. Yes, she's a lich and that's illegal. And that's illegal, so killing her is illegal, right? That's how it works. Yeah, We're is. not a justice system, we don't have a... Right, right, right. right. If, 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 she, if she were actually undead and you killed her, that wouldn't be a problem. You wouldn't be murdering someone. Because we someone. can't kill her by definition. But, right, then clearly you're actually doing the Empire a favor by outing the whole situation. Like, But yes... By Imperial so, law. Lichdom? Illegal. If only she weren't such a nice lich. If only she were <laughs> like the typical I live in a dark castle and I eat but, children lich. But maybe she's not even a lich. Okay. What's like, that? I don't even know. Drew doesn't even know what a lich is. Well, he probably has an idea. Like the lich king, right? I mean, but some I, undead like, that lich. She could, yeah. There could be all these sorts of things. Maybe she's not even undead. We have nothing to really... Show for that, except for like one guy who we know is a rapscallion and a liar, said that she was. I just kind of want to tell her what happened to her sister. Then she will attack what? us. And will that is you know, er, 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 not her sister, a descendant. Right. Not okay. her sister. Priscilla Melkor is over 200 years old. Bree was not over 200 years old. Yeah, I'm not into that. Just. If you do that, please, could I be far away when you do? <laughs> she yeah, will well, be kind of pissed. I killed her with my own hands <laughs> in cold blood. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not really into that, so. I so run from my like, 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 she didn't even express any hostile intentions. You fucking stealthed up and goddamn murdered her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Just fucking, God, like, no. gutted her with a fucking electricity. She was summoning Seriously? up there. Yes! She was Seriously? summoning a dead! You don't have a fucking I mean, dog! There's mean, still a She was surrounded <laughs> by like armed she was evil. undead Fuck and had what? like had like what? a, a You're dragon. You're not the fucking like sweep like your silly Melkor. But the yeah, if we rock. if we've done anything to break Imperial law, it's killing her because she was just summoning undead and conversing with dragons, both of which are legal. <laughs> you know, uh, she had, however, uh, hired uh, bandits to starve out a city, which is well, not legal. At all. According some, to some a rap scallion, right? <laughs> <laughs> she has also ordered. She has also ordered people to murder. She has also antagonized the druid. She has also done everything bad ever. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't think. Like... Oh, this is just terrible. <laughs> What's terrible? Everything. Uh, well, what, what would you want? Why do we to have do? to make complicated choices? Well, he, here's what I would suggest we do before we leave. We go to Asilia again, we go like, hey, can we can we speak in private somewhere where nobody else is listening? And then we'd be like, we fucking know. And then we sh we see what she does. She wouldn't let us, like, take her like, all know five what? of us in her. Like, no, we know you're an undead creature. She's like, uh, I'm, I'm not, though. And then you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Who told you I was? We... Well, the thing um, is, we talked to the no. Reverend, <laughs> <laughs> no. and then you let him go. And then you he, lied to me. We didn't ran. specifically say you <laughs> intentionally misled me. Yes. You, see, you know, see. that's that's strong well, what, what, what we And then is... the situation has been escalated to a worse place. We we can imply a lot of things and just see how, how she reacts. We can be like, we know, and she'll be like, what? Oh, about the thing in the crypt, the liquid, you know? And she'll be like, what? And we'll be like, yeah, oh, we, we, we know what it does, and Who told we know you? why you have it, and we know all Leon the things. I think Leon has like, had a conversation with her. Oh, uh, yeah. Leon is so, just... About that sort of thing, so, you know. Are you trying to get Leon? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. All right. I don't know. She acted pretty familiar to some other people, too. Yeah, she is far more buddy buddy with um, Prohiram than I expected. Yeah. You know, I, maybe, I maybe went, Prohiram I, I and Leon about... should go talk to her. We Just... could, but I don't see what we're talking to her about. Like, hey. Just be like, yo, this well, situation is shit. Either help us or we leave help. But, but <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> it's late, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, help uh, us or we leave. <laughs> all right, then. Uh, <laughs> it's us will, helping her, if anything. We will, we will transition uh, into what I like to do every four sessions. Um, and we'll start with... Well, Sheep has been so confused, so it's almost painful to do this, but we'll start with Sheep. Sheep, what has been your favorite part of the campaign thus far? I, I would like for you to pick from the past four sessions, but you can pick from all eight sessions if you'd like. Uh, the past four sessions... I think Salvador's trial was pretty good. Okay. If that was part of the last four sessions, I yes, don't quite... I was. think it was. Um... That was certainly something. All right. Mm. I I can't think of anything that was as memorable as that. So that's probably my, my best, my best thing that happened last uh, in the last sessions. Although I'm sure I'm forgetting something important. I always am. Manika, I, I just opened my IMs from like. Five hours ago, and I'm saying <laughs> some motherfuckers show you. What did this pertain to, by the way? We'll talk about that later. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, I see fucking messages from Dark. What? Is that ominous or anything? I think that's about the same oh. fucking thing. <laughs> well. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, th I, th I sent you PMs, like, really early on in the session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I looked at the timestamps. All right, um, so that's that. Asma Man, what has been your favorite part of, say, the past four sessions thus far? <laughs> Maybe punching someone toward the face, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, let's see. Mm, that was... No, I think uh, sort of uh, getting the dwarves to leave and not fight for uh, the Ravenger was probably my favorite moment. Pretty fun. <laughs> that was really funny. Right. I am really, I, I am looking forward to watching that episode to figure out just exactly you said. <laughs> oh. Yes, the Ravenger's reaction was awesome. <laughs> yes, he was surprised. Wait, what the fuck? Believe me. Manakai, what has been your favorite part of the past, I suppose, for you three sessions thus far? Yes. Um, well, I, I really do... Uh, I really do enjoy this kind of... No good options... Kind of it's situation. Not, it's not black and white morals, necessarily. Yes. There, Everything's there's, terrible. Yes, I like that. That's good. It's grim and dark. The player, it's, it's right. nice and, and, and terrible. And, and no matter what great, we do, it'll morals. be bad. If we leave, things are going to go bad. We do this or that. It's just... Yeah. It's nice and full of conflict, and it gets people talking and invested, and I like it very much. Um, finding out the plan was, of course, interesting. Nice that we got some things right, some things wrong. Um, let's see. Trial was interesting enough. Um, yeah. That was that was interesting enough. I would like I would like to talk to to the other people maybe a little more. So pre pre trial conversation, um, perhaps. But yeah, you know, other than that, I, does, I, I like things that we can plan for. It does seem a bit challenging to get us to talk in between. I no, try. I'm, not, I'm not blaming anyone at all. I mean, I'm bad for it too, uh, but. Like trying to arrange something, and it's like it's more a trickle because only one of us might be online at a time for a couple of days to respond. So it's I think that's a that's a challenge that we might need to try and figure. I do like things that that sort of require a little bit of of, of, of player planning before a session. Right. Uh, Griff, then uh, same question. What has been your favorite part of the past four sessions thus far? Uh, actually, um. Starting as best chronologically as I can, the trial was great fun to witness. Uh, it felt alive and breathing and very dynamic. Even though it was just yourself having to narrate the full thing, it felt like a flowing body. Uh, the involvement of the peasants and giving this idea that it was absolute mayhem 
during the combat and even through the trial that the crowd was flowing and stuff. It was absolutely brilliant. I really enjoyed that. And even following on afterwards, after the combat, after all of it, where we all went back down to talk to Salvador and found everyone murdered. And it was kind of one of those moments of dun, dun, dun. And us trying to be investigative to figure it out. And Ursula coming in, like swooning in, like, oh. And so that, that, that would actually be a tangential question for me. Who do you five think killed all of them? Um... Ursula. Probably the dragon. Ursula. <laughs> the dragon is... I have no idea. I wasn't there. I still don't think it was Ursula because... Why did she leave Salvador alive? She almost didn't. <laughs> yeah, she almost didn't, but then she did, even though we were gone and she could have just walked in there. Oh, but then it would have been her. It would have been obvious Freeze. it was her. She's a cunning one. Um, Anything else, Griff? Uh, the other thing is, as I do love the moral fight. As much as I hate them for having to make a choice, I do love the moral dilemma, like Manakai said. Uh, especially even through the previous campaign that I played with yourself and Manakai. It was very... <sighs> Lots of horribly moral dilemma choices to make. But it makes you think. It makes you wonder and it makes you doubt exactly what's going on. Like you're you're right, you don't know if someone's lied to you. Like who could you trust? Who who do you follow? Who what's going on in this grim dark world? And it it makes me want to take a lot more gambles with things. Um like, you know, I you know, it was the best of the world, but that's where I said earlier. Like, I'm more tempted just to sort of announce what happened to uh, the milk, the descendant milker, because I genuinely want to call her Brie, but I keep thinking of cheese. Um, <laughs> and I like it. I like that investment and that push that makes you think. Like, you're not being railroaded into boredom. You have to genuinely sit and knuckle down and go. Right, what the fuck is going on, and how can we figure out? And we did have an entire session where that was the case, where me, the dark, dark sheep, and Asma Man were all just standing, and going, "The fuck do we do? <laughs> like, all of our all of our leads are dried up. What 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 the fuck? Ah!" And it started off on such a high, and then all of a sudden we were getting all of these conflicting leads and clues and we tried to follow them up and we got nowhere and it's like ah ah what what's happened so that's that's what i enjoyed the trial the absolute flabbergast and having to think and be creative and uh, the moral dilemmas all right uh dark uh, that question, then what has been your favorite part of the past four sessions? Can you hear me okay from where I'm sitting right now? Can you get closer? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I think can it's fine. So, um, so, uh, I'm going to break this up into a few different bits. Um, during the trial, I quite enjoyed the fact that, because I don't tend to step up for it, but for the trial, if they try to step up and actually, like, speak forward and try and, you know, get a damn push done on these damn NPCs, I think I did a decent job at, but then afterwards, what made me more entertained was the combat where we had, um, where we had like you guys slaughtering peasants left and right, <laughs> with the exception of Fargus. Um, for which that's definitely been something. Uh, I think my favourite moment of all of it, though, was um, me when I came up with the creative for for the relationship dice for the Lich King, and I summoned that spirit on. Um, Salvatore. I was like, huh, I wonder, I, hmm. Like, the thought just came to my mind, it's like, could this work? PM, PM. <laughs> yeah, that creative freedom from narration is something I, I actually really, really like in both the system, just, that, as, the whole game as a whole also just played it. Okay. The fun of it, of course, is also the moral dilemmas is something I've enjoyed as well. I, I don't like necessarily having a black and white. I like having you know, greys in there. It's like, 
All right. We'll uh, transition then to the next question, uh, and we'll start again with uh, Sheep. What has been your least favorite part of the past four sessions? I don't think I can pinpoint any specific part that struck me as incredibly like superfluous or boring or anything. That would be too difficult. Okay. Um, I I do have to say in regards to the whole like moral grace and all that stuff. I mean, I do have to say I'm more used to like the standard linear, somewhat hero tale campaign so far. I've never played anything else really. And while I do like the ability to have choices that really matter, the past sessions have felt like we were kind of stuck in a box, just bouncing off the corners, hoping that we eventually hit a corner somewhere that leads us somewhere. We're just all over the place with all these leads that just end up going nowhere, and then it just half the time I, at least I personally, have an idea of what's going on, but no, absolutely no clue of what to actually do about it, really. There's no like, oh, yeah, it's clear, we have to do that. Which, I guess, is the point of this whole moral gray, because you don't always have the best choice. But I certainly have felt a bit directionless, let's put it that way. At times, at least. Not all the time, of course, but sometimes. I can I can understand the sentiment. Uh, not everyone enjoys, uh, and this is the style of campaign that I like to run, particularly with uh, a high fantasy setting with which I'm the most comfortable. I uh, I don't like to do a complete sandboxy type. I uh, I do enjoy my guide rails, but I like the player characters to come up with their like. I know I know all the facts. I I know uh, what's all transpiring here. Uh, I know uh, what every uh, each of the villains stands to gain from this. Uh, and I present those as you come across that information, and I leave it up to your interpretation. Like, uh, it wasn't until, like, I think Manakai was the first person to bring it up, uh, consider the idea that it wasn't Ursilia who wanted to kill you folks, it was Bree. Uh, and that wasn't just, like, that wasn't just, like, me providing you something new so much as him interpreting what had been provided in a different fashion. I, I, I do understand that that can come across as a bit guideless then. Like, what do you want from me? Like, how do I make this right? Uh, um, I think, I think my, my main feeling that kind of corresponds to the, like, the bigger picture of feeling directionless is that sometimes it feels like due to failing some sort of skill check, we are missing something that just seems incredibly vital at the time. And I will say that has not been true. And I, I, I know, I know, I know. Like, I do not work off the principle that because you fail skill checks, you end up missing on clues. I, uh, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fallacy, a trap that a GM can fall into when they design their narrow like corridors with railroads and stuff. In which case, the players can't progress because they don't find, like, the clues because they don't make, like, proper skill checks. Like, the stuff that you folks found in Salvatore Crane's house, for example, I had considered the possibility that you folks might go there and noted it down as something to suggest. But I didn't have mapped out all exactly what you would find. Similarly, you folks could have attempted to go ways, whether it was by tailing Bree, whether it was by attempting to find a way into Bree's room, in Melkor's state, now you might wonder, like, we're not a bunch of, like, sneaky types of people. How will we go about the process of doing that? I don't exactly have all the best suggestions for you, because as you are five players, you come up with better ideas than I have. What I give myself is, like, bullet points and notes, and I can certainly say that uh, I haven't, like, deprived you folks of, like, well... All the stuff has been there for you to see and interpret, if you would see or interpret it that way. It's a matter of, like, interpretation, like, who you think is the worst evil here and what you want to do with the situation. But that being said, and I know that was completely long-winded and entirely superfluous, I understand your sentiment, Sheep. It's, it's just, it's probably not the skill checks even that I'm, that I'm worried about, because I know that you are experienced enough to not make that mistake. But it's just very often I feel like we're just like an inch of the clue that will reveal everything and it never comes. 
I, I do know that this has been like a political quagmire. I had not thought uh, back when Session 1 started that uh, Fonkhaven would turn into this political quagmire it has been. Uh, I know that not everyone is interested in that. Uh, it's a lot of like intrigue here for even like a small town and uh, I don't know. Hopefully uh, I think that uh, we'll at least take a break from that should you actually leave Fonkhaven. So, uh, well, I, I don't mean to suggest that I hate everything about this. It's just that I understand. It's just I, I can only lost. make my feelings clear, basically. Yeah, exactly. Right. And uh, I, I understand the sentiment of feeling lost without, like, like where the fuck do you go from here? Um, Asthma Man, same question. What has been your least favorite part of the, the past four sessions? The fucking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking drone! <laughs> Goddamn douchebags. Uh, all right, Manika, yep. your least favorite part <laughs> of the past three sessions for you. Hmm. Yes, the past three sessions. Well, I just keep I just keep thinking about the stupid peasants. <laughs> uh, how 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 ah uh, the motivation to try to save this town has been dwindling as. As they've just continuously been completely uninterested in keeping themselves alive in any intelligent right. inte intelligent way. You as, as a player are developing apathy because these NPCs are too fucking they stupid don't to see the writing to be on the saved. wall. Yes. They're all assholes and terrible people. And they can have each other to some degree. And the only sensible people in the entire town have just decided to go fuck it and They're leave. They're like, out. That seems like the sensible thing to do. That's what we should do. <laughs> I, I guess. I guess that's. I. I don't know if I want to say that's the least favorite thing, but it's something I have. I have noticed that the that the people are very very unlikable. They've been general. corrupted by. Evil. Very very few of them have any virtues and that, that are worth protecting. And, and that was an intentional design in that fashion to. Uh, make these commoners uh, act as how I think they would have acted in the situation. That is to be ignorant ungrateful unaware uh just living in their uh their stupid paltry lives and uh, quick to rile up uh easy to manipulate and uh you know acting as a mob of people can do they panic and they overreact mm -hmm. so uh that was my intent and uh if yeah. that's how you as a player like want to choose it and that's factoring that decision that's fine with me fuck these people yeah screw them okay well, to some degree. Okay. Uh, Dark, your least... Oh, excuse me. Griff, your uh, least favorite part of the past uh, sev several sessions. Um, okay. Well, I'm just going to say, from the start, one of the biggest challenges I've had with Tempest is having to have an established character from the get-go. Of which is something Manakai has noticed and commented on several times in sessions. And it's been a huge challenge for me because I haven't had enough time to get an idea of what Tempest is. Right, you have your disconnects because of your work schedule. Yeah. Um, so that's not necessarily in the campaign, but that's me having a, having to quickly try and get an idea. Okay, who is Tempest? What is Tempest? I have to quickly get it established, and it's been challenging for me. Um, but I have taken the time to sit and figure out, okay, who is Tempest, and sit and run through scenarios in my head of what Tempest would do. In regards, and that's influenced a lot in how I figured Tempest might react in situations. Okay. So that's why I bring it up is I, a lot of what Tempest I hoped him to be is to be quite this morally ambiguous character. Like he will steal from dwarfs because, you know, fuck them. They fucked up his life, you know. He doesn't see them as any worthwhile anything if they're allied with the dwarven king uh their possessions are they're they're available for the pickings he'll pick up sentimental ornaments just to screw with them he'll take magical items and put them in embarrassing situations to mock the dwarf king uh he will steal useless things things with no value just to rub it in the dwarf king's face that's tempest and he has done a lot of dastardly things, and that's that's how I've got in. But as before, a lot of what he was doing was my morals as a player. 
like I was putting my morals on Tempest, and it's like ah no, I'm getting confused now. I'm getting too weirdly invested. Um, a lot of other parts, uh, things that confused me was perspective. Things that might be very, very obvious for yourself, Grimith, or for other people, might not be obvious to me at all. And, like, it could be a case of, like, staring at a, a, a table, and there's a note, and it's like, I'm currently staring, I'm staring at the bottle, figuring, what's in the bottle? And you're like, fucking read the note! <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm always wary that that's something I've missed as well. Like what Sheep said, that you've just misinterpreted something that could have been said, or you feel like an idiot because you've not been able to add the two and two. You're putting the, you're putting the circle in the square, and it's just not fitting. Um, I felt like that in the session with Sheep and Nazmaman and Ark, where it was just, ah, and there was moments of epiphany, like, let's talk to Carmilla! But... I realized that was totally grasping at straws. That was hoping desperately was. just for any lead that may have worked. Like we raced, raced through the Ravinger to look for that mage that did the ice magic to get a sign that said, nope. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> the, uh, the hope that existed there with uh, you finding the clues and the hoof prints there, well, I should say clues, but uh, with what you found there was to indicate that Beric Whitmourne was not responsible for killing all of them, because as Fargus found all of those sets of like hoof prints leading out, there's no possible there. way Beric could have gone all the way north and then gone all the way back to Foghaven. There was only uh, the two drow, essentially, who had traveled to Foghaven, which would have left you with Beric did not kill these people, which Salvatore corroborated. Like, Beric and, didn't kill these people. And that's exact, exactly one of the points that I just made there as well, is, you know, we had a very, a very, you know, a thing there that showed us, no. But did we look at that? No, we were too focused on, get the Ravinger! We have tracks that lead us to the Ravinger! Let's follow the tracks to the Ravinger! And that's what we saw. And, and I understand, like, uh, like help books for, like, DMing, basically, will, like, say, like, uh, players don't, like, they understand things in different ways. They come into sessions with different moods, different thoughts, different attitudes, and uh, players will always interpret things differently than what you think, which is why I had hoped that, uh, by having those tracks there, and then whenever you got something out of Salvatore to corroborate, Beric wasn't responsible, that uh, you, oh, well, you would take with that and do whatever you want with it. My hope is not to give you a set of answers which are inherently right or wrong. My hope is to give you as players the flexibility to choose what you want to do based on what you think is right or wrong. Uh, you have indicated through your passions and experiences, certainly by the end of this session, what you're willing to do and where you want to go from here. And fuck any other interpretation of right or wrong, that's what you as the players have chosen to be right. That being said, as I said to Sheep, I can understand the feeling of, uh, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? You even made a comment during last week's session, like, I feel as if we're missing stuff that Grimith is just, like, putting there in front of us, and... It, it's not my intent to, like, make you feel as if you're unobservant or unintelligent. It's, I suppose, I'm presenting the situation as your character would perceive it to the best of my ability, and I leave it up to you to construct it how you'd like. And you can make out of that whatever you will. It leads to an interesting story, and of course it's a realism story. You, you place the toothpicks in the crime scene in front of us. If we decide to focus on the couch... Then we focus on the couch and the story of all from right, there. Right. It's how I, stories I, I, are made. I don't want to railroad you into the toothpicks. If you guys want to look at the couch, look at the couch. I'll, I'll work with it. I will work with the couch. Say, for example, I didn't plan, and this was after you left last session, for the other players to encounter Ravinger and uh, Celine and Beric Whitmorn on the road. Did not even think of that as coming up. But it came up, courtesy of the events that happened in the session. Based on everything that I transpired, I decided that Salvatore would be moving that night, basically. And he was moved. And the players got in on that. And it turned into fighting uh, Ravinger. any rate, uh, Dark, what has been your least favorite part of the past four sessions? 
I think it partially relates to both what um, Griff and Sheik's been saying, which is kind of just our, at some points where, most notably, you know, when Manico wasn't here, where we lost, where we more just kind of lost traction. Where I, I, I definitely felt we, I definitely felt I had, we had the clues, but we weren't putting them together correctly. 